It all started two years ago. A man is on his way to the British anti-doping agency UKAD. He is a convicted doper who is hoping for a reduction of his suspension. The whistleblower spills the beans, among other things about a doctor who has not only doped him, but also many others. What happened on that day okay. That's what was reported to me yes. one and a half years later. Mm -hmm. The whistleblower had approached my colleagues from the British Sunday Times. And they informed the ARD doping editorial team. I set off for Great Britain. Meeting with the colleagues. They asked me if we were willing to participate in an undercover operation in London. A decoy is used to find out about everything that the suspicious doctor might possibly still be doing in secret. The first pieces of evidence are clear. Prescriptions for Testogel, a testosterone preparation, the growth hormone Genotropin, and the EPO variant Aranesp, all highly effective doping agents. Prescribed by Dr. Mark Bonar, 38 years old, a gynecologist by profession. First, however, I meet the whistleblower who spilled the beans about Bonar. He does not want to be recognized. He's afraid. Dr. Bonham, in my view, could well be the UK's version of Lutz Armstrong's doping doctor, Dr. Ferrari. I knew he'd worked with athletes before. He knew what he was talking about. It was Bona who progressed me from testosterone to other substances. He asked me, have you ever tried EPO? Have you ever tried huge growth hormone? The whistleblower remained in contact with the anti-doping agency UKAD, had engaged a lawyer. Not all his information was convincing, but he presented the evidence, hoped in return to be given a reduced suspension. Nevertheless, nothing happened for a long time. Nine months later, however, this email arrived. UKAD wrote to the whistleblower, no reduction in his suspension. About Dr. Mark Bona, it merely said, That information has not led to the discovery of anti-doping rule violation or other grounds for action to be taken against Dr. Bona. The case appeared to have been closed. Really hard to believe. I look around in the upmarket London Medical Practitioners District. Here in the middle of the city, Bona is said to have practiced. More recently, he was operating somewhere else, in a spa and beauty clinic. This is it in the district of Knightsbridge. A top-ranked sportsman, who I've known for a long time, agrees to act as a decoy. Is the whistleblower right with his accusations? An appointment is quickly arranged with the doctor. The undercover reporter, disguised as a sports manager, together with our decoy, the athlete, are equipped with hidden cameras. The athlete speaks first. He had heard that here he could get certain medical preparations. For this purpose, he must go into the basement, where Dr. Bonner comes straight to the point. Of course, some of the treatments that I provide are banned in professional sports. That must be clear to you, but I've already used them with many athletes for years, pretty much from every sport. They consult me discreetly, after all, their reputation is at stake and mine too. Bonner appeared to be completely sure. Weeks later, the next appointment. The doctor prescribes our decoy several doping substances, proposes an eight-week course of treatment with anabolic steroid injections three times a year. For the half-hour consultation, he charges the equivalent of almost 200 euros. The doctor also has a share in the proceeds from the doping substances. that are available to buy in the adjoining pharmacy, a doping complete package. Our decoy has purchased highly effective substances, DHEA, a so-called pro-hormone for muscle building, and genotropin, a growth hormone. You dance better than John Travolta, don't you? It depends on how you do it. Microdoses at certain times in the off-season. With EPO, the blood is too thick. Then we have to take blood thinning. Incidentally, I've worked with many elite athletes. At that level, it is really impossible to do it without doping. Doping is a fact in sport. The athletes want a specialist for that, and I do it responsibly. All videos are in the possession of the ARD doping editors and the Sunday Times in their original form, unedited and in full length. 
and the doctor becomes increasingly open, appears to be gaining confidence when he talks to the supposed sports manager and our decoy. If anyone should ask me why do you give this athlete testosterone, then I say he has symptoms of testosterone deficiency. The level must be increased. But it's not the real reason, right? No. What does that mean for my athlete here? Medically, there are no problems. The only point is to improve his performance? Yeah, that's true. But you don't just say that, you have to sell it differently. At the university in Oxford, the world-renowned endocrinologist Ashley Grossman and his team are studying the medical consequences of the abuse of hormones in sport. All of these can cause excess strain on the heart, can cause a whole variety of other clinical problems, and those in turn can lead to a lot of medical problems and can even be lethal. Grossman calls for the Medical Council to immediately initiate proceedings to revoke the license to practice medicine. The doctor, however, appears to cheerfully continue. After several meetings in his practice, he speaks clearly about his clientele for the first time. Around 150 sportsmen and women came to me in the last six years. But I prefer not to talk about that openly, otherwise journalists could become interested in it. My clients are mostly top athletes, boxers, footballers, tennis players, martial art fighters, cricketers from England and Australia, bodybuilders, cyclists who have already participated in the Tour de France. How one of them mastered the climbs on the Tour, that was unbelievable. And all this in the UK, a sports superpower. At the 2012 Olympics, the number one sports nation in Europe. Dr. Bonner has been divulging is true. That means the UK's anti-doping activities are not effective. They're thereby regarded by many as exemplary worldwide. Not only the whistleblower who started the ball rolling wonders why so few are caught. I think UCARD are making a concerted effort to cover up a problem that is endemic in UK sports. They weren't interested. I believe they have let down public by doing that and potentially placed other athletes' lives at risk by allowing this to continue. His opinion is clear. The informant has confirmed all statements in writing. At the beginning of the year, Dr. Bonner was even more open. The concealed camera is running again. The undercover reporters meet Bonner for dinner in a luxury hotel in London. I have worked with a couple of Premier League footballers from Chelsea, Arsenal and Birmingham City. Also with players from abroad. Even with one of the really big stars who I have occasionally given EPO, testosterone and growth hormone. Footballers are hardly tested in any case. And then he mentions the name Rob Brinded, a former fitness coach at Chelsea. I do a lot of business with him. Doping in football? My London colleagues and I now want to know, is Bonner just showing off? The fitness coach, named by him Brinded, now lives in Spain. A few weeks ago, the undercover reporters met Brinded several times. Once again, the concealed camera is running. Our pretext, Brinded should help to boost a couple of athletes. Yes, I'd be happy to do that, but I don't do anything unethical. Dr. Bona looks after the other things. And he says... Bona has collaborated with a number of footballers. About doping in the Premier League? One team doctor told me years ago older players were getting anabolic steroids for better regeneration. And Brindit confirms that he recently recommended Bonner to a player of one of the top clubs for a testosterone treatment. In response to our current official inquiry, Rob Brindit has denied ever having known Dr. Bonner. Chelsea and Arsenal also deny any involvement with Dr. Bonner, who had claimed to have worked with their players. The English Premier League, it too, is apparently now becoming involved in the doping problem. And Dr. Mark Bonner, when now confronted with the results of our research, he denied having doped athletes. They had all been medically necessary treatments. As the hidden cameras were rolling, that all sounded very different. Individual cases or a symptom of a non-functioning control system after all? 
British sports on the occasion of the 2012 Olympics was regarded as exemplary. Even German officials were rhapsodizing. When asked, the UK AD has now admitted that it had not investigated sufficiently in the case of Bonner. The medical council was never involved. The British sports ministry said it was shocked and deeply concerned. Hard to believe, UKAD was recently appointed by WADA to organize the doping controls in the doping-ridden Russian sports. The IOC has even requested that the British coordinate all doping tests worldwide prior to the Olympics in Rio. For these decisions, there probably could hardly have been a worse timing.